Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us again for the next installment of the Javad Virtual Workshop series. Uh, today, I'm joined by our longtime friends at Allsat, who are here to discuss the Triumph 3 receiver. Uh, Allsat is a member of the Javad Dealer Network, and they're based in Germany. Uh, Kai Zimmerman and Michael Schultz, uh, representatives of Allsat, have joined me today to first provide an overview of the Triumph 3 and its features and some of the, the basic uh, components of it and then to discuss in further detail some examples in the field uh, about how they've integrated their own custom survey software called GART uh, with Triumph 3. And you'll see um, some examples of how they get survey jobs done in the field. Uh, so that'll be very exciting to see and we're excited to show it to you. Just as a reminder, as usual, we have a Q&A session at the end. So please enter your questions uh, for Kai and Michael into the question box on your screen and we'll be happy to address them all at the end of the workshop. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Kai Zimmerman. Kai, thank you for joining us. Okay, thanks, Nima. Um, yeah, please let me introduce myself. My, oh, oh I need to, okay. Um, yes, um, my name is Kai Zimmerman, Zimmerman from Alsat uh, support team. Um, I work for Alsat for about 10 years and uh, Among other things, I'm uh, responsible for Javad support of the GNSS uh, receivers. Okay, I will start with a video. Um, okay, uh, my colleagues um, created a cool video about unboxing of Triumph 3. I think I can start it now. Purchase Triumph 3, you will get it in a, a white, white box. And if you open the box, you will find two smaller boxes inside uh, with the cables and the, the antennas. If you re remove them on, on the bottom of the box, uh, you will find the Triumph 3 receiver. Okay, that's it. On the front uh, of the receiver, there are some um, plastic covers uh, for uh, the connectors and uh, the slots. You have the Ethernet connector, two USB connectors, one for standard USB and the other one for a small USB cable to connect it with your PC. Also, you have got a micro SD slot, a micro SIM slot, and the power connector for your power supply. On the back, you will find the LEDs. Uh, some of them are combi uh, buttons uh, combined with LEDs. Um, on the left side, the power button. Uh, then you find the battery LED. It will be green if the battery is okay and red if it's uh, empty. A power connector is a cell phone um, LED indicator. It, it, will, it will be green if the internet is available. Also Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you can turn it on and off with a button and so on. Okay, it has been a little bit too fast. Um, uh, on the side of the receiver, you find the connectors for UHF antenna and, okay, I will stop the video short time. Um, the other LEDs, you have got one LED for UHF, um, one LED for the Ethernet uh, connection, one LED for satellite tracking. It's the satellite on the right side. Um, it will get green if you have got a position and red if you are, have uh, too few satellites for position calculation. Uh, then you have got a position indicator to show if the current position is the accuracy, the position you wanted to have. For example, if you use RTK, it will be uh, gr get green if you have got an RTK position and will be red if you have only standalone mode. On the, the right uh, side, you find a uh, a record button for storing uh, uh, raw data on the internal memory of the Triumph 3. I will continue the video. And next, I will show, uh, show you how to configure the receiver with the Javad configuration tool. It's called NetView and Modem. You can connect using uh, Ethernet uh, or Wi-Fi 
or serial port, Bluetooth, um, or USB connection. In this case, I will use a serial Bluetooth port to connect to a Triumph 3 receiver. If you are connected, you will find on the top of the software the information about the receiver, serial number, firmware version, and the uh, kernel of the Linux version you've uh, on board. Also, you will find uh, the actual position calculation with uh, standard deviation and satellite geometry. On the upper right side, you will find uh, the internal memory usage, and the main screen uh, shows the satellite tracking, the different uh, signature noise ratios of the satellites, uh, where you can find the satellite, satellite system. Also, uh, you can find the satellite status, uh, if, if, if it's used for the position, for example, the health of, of the satellite, and uh, you can switch to Skyplot with a 2D uh, view of your satellites, and so you can see if you've got enough satellites for your position calculation, um, or if you, if you have too few satellites or too much shadowing, for example. In general, I would say uh, I, I configure the receivers in the kind that I uh, configured for the specific uh, um, application I want to use it for. So um, the special on Triumph 3 is you've got the possibility to use independent tracking or unguided tracking. You can use every satellite signal on its own. Uh, you don't need to have the CA code. Um, of, it could happen sometimes that the CA code is uh, disturbed somehow, and so you can't use a satellite without uh, with independent tracking. You can use the, the other frequencies uh, for your um, for your position calculation at all, and um, you can also configure the satellites you you want to use. For example, in Germany we can't use R e IRNSS uh, or QSAT SS, so I uh, normally disable them. Um, also, if we want to use SBUS, we can only use three satellites from Agnos, so um, I normally disable SBUS completely and only activate the three satellites we can use uh, in Germany. As you can see, I enable three satellite numbers for my correction, corrections, uh, SBUS corrections. If we switch back to the measurement screen, we now can see that only three SBUS satellites exist, um, the, the three satellites we can use. Um, to get uh, Agnos uh, position calculation, we need to change uh, the position computation mode to uh, WD. Um, and now we have got a DGPS uh, solution and accuracy of uh, 0.35 meters. Um, but normally it's not enough for uh, for people today, so we need to uh, get a higher accuracy with RTK. Uh, we configure an NTRIP client to get corrections, MSM corrections uh, in our days for all satellite systems. First, we need to uh, enable the internal LTE modem, enter pin code and APN for the network we want to use. That's very easy. You can simply uh, enter it in, in the edit fields, and next you have to start the modem, set it to GPRS, that's historical. Um, normally uh, today it should be LTE, but uh, we should be backward co compatible with, with all the software, so we won't change it at, the, at the, this time. If you wait some seconds, the modem will be started, uh, booted, and um, if it's running, uh, the information about the installed modem will be shown under info device. Uh, Triumph 3 uses uh, Sierra Wireless modem. Yes, there it is. And uh, below it, uh, you will find the actual network you are connected to. In this uh, case, it's LTE network, Kongstar, uh, Kongstar, and we have mobile internet connected. So that's the first step to get uh, corrections uh, using Entrip. Next uh, is we need to configure the Entrip client to get to get the corrections uh, for RTK. 
Um, you are free to use uh, every Entrip caster you know. Uh, you can either use uh, IP address or DNS name, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, simply enter your um, your data and uh, the mount point you want to use and enable the entry mode uh, the, on the left side, yes. Okay, now entry data is running you can see it on the main measurement window if we okay you need to to configure also the, the uh, incoming data port on the uh, correct uh, correction data format in this case it's rtcm3 um, if you look on the main screen you now see we are still in DG, ggps mode but uh, the cor corrections are already running next is we need to change the position computation mode to phase differences to get RTK. And I also configured uh, back fallback area uh, SBUS Agnos. So if the corrections uh, will perhaps break up, uh, I still get uh, my Agnos corrections. If I configured everything correct, now we, we are in RTK fixed mode. Uh, the uh, standard deviation now is 0 0.008 uh, below one centimeter. That's what we need for uh, yeah, a good uh, a pr precise RTK. Um, okay, um, solution. Next is uh, the new spoofing uh, option. Uh, Triumph 3 supports spoofing mode. You can... Um, detect spoofing and uh, jamming uh, directly uh, while you are using RTK and it will be uh, used directly in your position calculation. Um, I need to stop a short time. Okay. Um, uh, on the upper, uh, on the lower right corner, you now see some colors for spoofed, jammed and spoofed and jammed. And if, for example, a satellite will be spoofed or jammed, it will be marked in the satellite table. Um, so you can directly see which um, satellite could be jammed or spoofed. And uh, Javad, the firmware automatically removes this satellite from the position solution calculation. So uh, um, you can be sure your RTK position is correct. I will continue the video. Okay. Yes, uh, one satellite uh, uh, marked as spoofed, but it's uh, also we don't don't even have information about it. I think it's uh, it's a satellite that that was behind the horizon somehow. Okay, next um, cool feature is we can generate uh, spectra from all satellite systems, uh, including. The three filters uh, Triumph uh, three uses to to track satellites. We have uh, three wideband filters on the, the new Triumph three chip uh, for all satellite systems. Uh, the new uh, TRE three uh, S board also has, has a fourth uh, wideband filter, but it's for Germany. It's not uh, interesting because. You can uh, track S band and S band. Uh, we, we can't get it in Germany. So if you're interested in also an S band, you can also use another, the newer board, the 3S board. Okay, as you can see, um, NetView modem generates all spectra from all satellite systems in a row. Um, that, need, mean, that needs some time, so I can perhaps uh, tell a little bit more about uh, Triumph 3 firmware. Uh, the firmware. Uh, the actual firmware uh, 4 is uh, available for all uh, receivers, also for the, the older generation, uh, but they are not that powerful like Triumph 3. So um, you can use it, but uh, could be that not all options are available for it. Also, uh, um, a cool feature of Triumph 3 is the Linux on board. You have uh, in, with uh, something like a, a real PC, where you can add your own your own uh, transformations, for example, uh, uh, data format transformation or etc. Uh, Javad, if if you need a special application or a special um, conversion or something like that, I think uh, the Javad engineer team can add this feature to the Linux on board, and so it's possible, for example, to convert to Rhinox uh, on the device. ETC. 
Okay, now we are we have got a spectrum, the first spectrum of the first white band filter. It's the filter where all some of the the satellite system signals are present. I think, for example, it should be GPS, and I need I need to check the the, the frequency table. But you can see GPS one by Ju and uh, uh, E one was at that in 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 this at um. In this filter, uh, the this next filter um, is about GPS 5, uh, Galileo E5A, Baidu B2A, ETC. Um, we will wait some seconds until it is finished. And then we have the, the third filter for more signals. So you can uh, use uh, those diagrams, for example, if you want to place a reference station, a base station. Um, then you can uh, take a, uh, take an external antenna antenna on the antenna external antenna connector of Triumph 3 to find the best position for the antenna, for example. Uh, also, it, it is very easy to use natural modem to um, to start a reference station. You only need to uh, set um, the antenna type, the position as an APN uh, AP. R and uh, then you can uh, convert it to a, to the antenna phase center and start the base. Um, it's in it's, it's under a base tab, but I haven't recorded this in this video. Okay, next is yes, we can record easily raw data under five slots in parallel. Uh, also ASCII data if you want to define uh, other message sets. You can can use uh, those five slots for different kinds of messages. This um, case, I uh, record standard uh, raw data, JPS data, and download it on my PC. Okay, the next cool new feature is the RTPK option of Triumph 3. Um, using RTPK, you, you can record or the receiver records raw data and also the incoming correction data from your entry provider, from your caster. And um, those data can be locked for some epochs, for example, 30 seconds, and you can process those uh, data uh, directly on the receiver to get a post-processing solution. So it's not a real-time kinematic solution, but it's not uh, also not a, a real post-processing solution where you use two raw data files from two receivers. You use simply uh, the raw data and the incoming corrections to get uh, an additional solution. For example, if you won't get an RTK, RTK fixed solution at a, spe a specific position, you can start RTPK, wait for 30 seconds, and process uh, your raw data with the incoming corrections. And um, it surely, or well, most most of the uh, cases it can happen that that um, a solution will be calculated and you have your precise position so i will continue the video and uh, you can see how it works okay this this case we we um, collect the raw da data for i think 30 epochs in this video and afterwards, I only need to push the process RTPK file button. Now the data is processed, and I get a report about the precise co coordinate. Uh, it has been successful. Uh, now I have got a precise position. Um, this uh, option is included in Java Mobile Tools also and uh, on Triumph LS Plus. Okay, next cool feature is you can uh, um, define your own message sets and uh, assign them to the different receiver ports. Uh, yes, you can you can select from all messages available on Java. Uh, if you are ready with your configuration, you can save the whole configuration to a file. Uh, so you can um, use it again all the time if you have uh, the same application. Um, and okay, then you, we've got a, a terminal, it's called Grice commands, where you can uh, send directly commands to your receiver using the actual interface you use. For example, I enable a GGA message at 10 Hertz 
and log it to a file using Grice commands terminal. Okay. Also, it is possible on Netroot modem to reset the receiver to factory defaults, for example. If you have got another application, you can update options if you if you perhaps purchased uh, the standard set and you want to uh, upgrade your receiver with with new okay with new features then you can up, uh, simply upload it uh, under update options and you can update the firmware from file or website directly using the software if uh, we get a newer firmware version below you see at, at this time we use 39 or 45 uh, tracked satellites for the standalone position calculation. Okay, one last thing I forgot in the, my first video, um, multi-RTK. So I think the video should start in a few seconds. Another cool feature is because Triumph 3 is so uh, so performant, um, CPU is that's fast, fast, we can use four RTK engines in parallel for RTK. I will enable it next. Okay, it's called multi RTK. Um, and if we check the main screen and we change to RTK engines, we can see all four RTK engines running on the receiver. At this moment, RTK engine four is already fixed and the weight is 100%. So it will be output uh, in the GTA message, for example. Okay, RTK one engine is also fixed. So the receiver um, uh, weights every uh, solution uh, uh, and, and takes the solution that's uh, the the highest with the highest probability to output it in the messages so at this case rtk is three and four are equal so i think you will either take rtk is three or four for the gta message output for example okay uh, i think that's it for now and uh, yes i will hand over to michael he will show something about guard and how to use uh, triumph three in the field Yes, uh, thank you, Kai. Um, first, I'd like to introduce me. My name is Michael Schulz. I'm a general manager at Alzat. And uh, actually, Alzat, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. So we could well say that we are quite long in the business. And I would like to show you in the next video, which will start in a second, um, some field practice uh, of the Triumph 3 that Kai has explained so beautifully um, with our guard software. So I think you get a very good impression now of the multiple features and the power that this receiver uh, uh, offers. And I would like to show you how we have optimized our software to control the Triumph 3 to uh, to make best use of it for the daily survey operations. So maybe two more sentences about our guard software. Well, for me, um, guard is like a baby or my baby. I was the first developer of guard at Alzat, and I gave birth to it in 1998, which is 23 years ago. This was our first guard version running under MS DOS on a Husky FS3 controller. And already at this time, it was it was a very uh, important piece of software for the survey market as it already combined GNSS receiver and total station control in one project. And today I would like to show you the current guard version running on a, on a tablet PC. And well, we have seen many GNSS receivers with guard, many total station generation. We still support them. And I would like to show you now how our guard software, let's say, um, unveils the power of Triumph 3 um, in field use. Okay, you see Kai here with our new employee, Kim. 
And Kim, she is at Alzad only since one and a half months. So we give her the system and we said, good luck. And well, we're not only taking you on camera, but we are also recording your screen. And that is what you see there in the right corner. This is what Kim is seeing on her tablet. This is Guard, and she's starting the receiver. And as you can see, there are only a very few options, only the necessary option that you need for RTK use in the field with the Triumph 3. So uh, you see the, the, the magic of NetView and modem, all this possibility. We have extracted this to the minimum necessary options. Also now, the NTRIP correction for network RTK, just one simple dialogue, push the button, get the corrections, and this is it. You have set up the receiver, you set it up to receive corrections, and what you see now is our measurement screen. And there we use a traffic light indicator. It's very simple. It came from customers of us who said, I want to have one view and judge is the system reliable. And it's very simple. If, if everything is green, you can immediately start your work and it's, it's, it's secure that these points will be reliable. Like we have now, we have a fixed solution. The standard deviation are within a few millimeter to centimeter. We have enough satellites, the PDOP is okay, and we have correction. So now Kim, she starts her work with, the, let's say, with the classic mode, as we all know. You level the pole over the point you want to measure. You enter the point number and uh, you choose a code. By the way, our new guard version has a much more powerful code tool. It's called the guard GIS version. And there you can enter flexible attribute mod modules with value lists. And this means you can also store complex GIS features very easily in the field. We call it the combination of surveying and GIS. So now Kim, she starts getting to move. Um, she stored the second point now. And as soon as you're in a point number series, it's very easy. You just concentrate to level the pole to get the position. And um, if you see everything is green, you don't have to care much about um, the disturbing numbers in this case. So next is that Kim, she shows us how to measure in the tilt mode. Again, there is a second window we have to assist in the tilt mode. And again, this is also working with the traffic lights. If it's green, you know you can store the point. What is remarkable about the tilt mode measurement with the Triumph 3 is that it automatically detects motion and you can the only thing you have to concentrate, put the end of the pole on the point that you want to measure. And then you move the pole for a certain period. It can be two minutes, uh, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, as you like. It's also doesn't matter the direction, just move the pole. And internally, it works with 100 hertz RTK plus 100 hertz IMU measurements. And this is put into a fusion algorithm and then uh, it automatically computes the precise position. But it's doing this over averaging several hundred measurements, and this is why it's, it's good and reliable to use it. Now we come to a more uh, challenging environment. You can see there's a building in the background. We have a tree over us, and you can see the traffic light is now showing, for example, we have a float solution. Now it's jumping to fix. Okay. And you can take the solution, measure it in the same way that we did, and, and simply store the point. And now we come to some points, uh, doesn't matter how, you cannot measure them in the classical way, because you're not able to level the pole over it. So here are some scenarios where this tilted measurement um, will really help you to get the job done um, in the field. And now we said, Kim, that's, that's a good job for your first survey with guard. And um, we handed the system over to me. And um, of course, I know how to use guard. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, before we hand it over to me, we, we sent Kim to the forest and we took some shots of this. Uh, and you can see this is really heavy canopy. 
she doesn't need to make tilt measurements now because that you have a fix there is almost like like a miracle when I look to to the experience we have with uh, GNSS in the forest. But you know the Charm three it's using all four satellite system in this case, and we have a, a connection in the forest. So this means it's a very powerful receiver when it comes to RTK performance. Now the system is handed over to me, and I have a job to do on a construction site. And unfortunately, what I need to measure are some pipes will, that are kind of uh, uh, a little bit hard to access, and I don't want to go um, down. Uh, so I measure them from upside, and because I want to, you know, have some secure standing, I don't care about leveling the pole. Again, I measure it here with, with a tilted mode, and um, I can be sure that the result that I get uh, is good enough. If it's not, uh, um, I will simply remeasure it and then make a longer period of the movement to get the point the way I need. Next point is a pipe uh, that's a little bit deeper even, but also there we have um, no problem to um, to get our shot done. And um, if we now continue along this pipe trench, we come to an area where uh, the earth is already, uh, the gravel is already put in. And also there I have some points which are kind of like uh, hard to level. And uh, in this case, I get my job. And I think when it comes to speed, um, when you're used to measure this tilt mode and when you're used to not always concentrating on leveling the pole, you are more faster in this case than you're in the, in the classical way. And um, I think that this is the future of, of surveying if you me, uh, talk about combining the inertial measurement using, with RTK, which is a technology that in my point of view, perfectly fits um, fits together. So I think for this construction site, we are done, uh, satisfied with the job. We have our points and um, we take the next job. And this is uh, our offices in Hanover. And um, well, oops, our office is not in the map. So the job is to map our Alzat office building. And as you can see, this is a heavy, heavy uh, environment. It's a metal facade. This means it's, it's pure multipath at this direction. And I want to measure the four corners of the building. And as you know, uh, it's very hard to level a GNSS receiver exactly at the corner. So I decided also to use the tilt mode to measure these four corners. And it's, um, well, I'm, I'm always um, inspired by this RTK performance. And as you can see, we are also get correction, which is important, also correction for all four satellite system. And as you can see, it's not a miracle. So here we have some, some very hard obstruction. And of course, the system sometimes jumps to float, but uh, it's good to control. And here you can see a little trick that I do if I if I don't get the fix continuously at the corner, I move a little bit outside, get the fixed solution, and then quickly move towards the corner and take the shot. Um, the same is was true for the second corner. There were some buildings very close to it. So I get to the free, more or less free surrounding, go to the corner, start measuring, and um, the system automatically detects when I stop the movement and the green light tells me, okay, you're ready for measurement. So normally I would be done because I have four corners, but our building has a little specialty. It has like a, well, a glass bay window front, and this is, has not been in the map and I decided we need to map it. There's no way in accessing this po point which is at the rear. So I decide to measure the first two points. And everybody who knows GNSS knows that this glass 
windows and and all the metal around it's it's not an easy environment to get the gnss position and for example here at this point i also try to measure it tilt at the first time it shows red it tells me okay um this was not successful so i simply started again i move again wait and okay at the second try it tells me fixed and ready for measurement so from the measurement side this job is done of course we uh, put uh, re uh, forwarded some scenes of it so it's it's not that it's done in one minute but we have the solution now we have to use some of the calculation functions of guard because as you can see the shape of the building it, it's not correct as it is now uh, first step that i have to do is um, that i um, calculate use a calculation function called detail points. With detail points, I first define a measurement line between two points. So I click on two of the corners of the building. This is my measurement line. And then I simply select uh, a point that will be uh, uh, calculated perpendicular on this measurement line. So this way I uh, uh, constructed my first point. I do the same uh, with the second point. So now I have my two foot points. And then just some cosmetics. I need to delete this line that has been drawn in auto line models with guard. Simply click on it, say delete. And I need to add the missing lines. Um, what I oversee here that I'm still in the auto measurement mode. This works only if I really get GNSS position. So it was not working first time. Okay, I see my error. I put a new line, start the line, simply click on the three points and they're connected with the line. Click on the other three points, stop the line. And that is my job for today outside. Now I, I transfer the project inside. We got a guard viewer version, which is free of charge for the whole office. So every job that has been measured outside can be inside. Um, edited or exported in any format you like. First task, I say, there is our building. Now I want to calculate the area of the building. I simply click inside it, guard automatically finds the surrounding lines and says, in this case, we have 746 square meters. And I click on dimension and it automatically adds uh, the dimension of the surrounding lines. So now, well, I'm a surveyor. And I ask myself, can I really trust these points as I have been measured via GNSS? And well, we simply check it. So we built up our total station, which you can see there. And we measured also the corner point reflector three with the total station. And what we do now is we compare these measurements. You can see the white uh, uh, circles are the point we measured over GNSS and the blue ones are the one from the total station. And if you can see the scale or we use the bearing distance function, you can see it's about 2.8 centimeters off, which is for our uh, understanding uh, a very reasonable and uh, satisfying uh, result. Well, in the remaining minutes, I'd like to show you some of the additional features of GUARD. For example, here I have one point where I take a picture from using my tablet. And this picture is then automatically attached to the point. I click on view images and I have an additional uh, documentation way. Also, the precise RTK coordinate will be automatically written into the, uh, into the uh, georeference information of the picture. So I have it georeferenced precisely. Now, one more thing I'd like to show you is the setting out. It's uh, very intentional. You um, just start the setting out functionality you click on the point that you want to stake out you hit start and god immediately calculates the position uh, and and shows you the distance uh, and the direction you need to go and i show you here for example this is the satellite view we offer in guard um, just by the way why we move to the point when you come closer we have a plot automatically adjusts the scale and shows you precisely where to go to the point. I think everything else 
uh, you're very well familiar with. Now to close this session, uh, I'd like to show you some of the map function of GART. So a standard today is to put a WMS um, dynamic map in the background. And now I choose to load an open street map, not only containing information about roads, but also about building. And there's one thing I would like to point your attention to. Look at this difference between the truly measured building and the information we got from the open street map. It's about, I would say, two meters, two meters off. So don't trust in sources where you don't know where these state geodata come from. And to close everything, yes, I want to go to 3D. What I really like when I get projects in from customer or project that we measured ourselves, um, load them into Google Maps. And uh, this is the best way to get a very close and very fast um, uh, quality check of your data. You, there you can see our building in 3D. You can see the window glass facade, uh, the glass bay window front, it's in there. And the points are matching. Of course, we have this little offset, but it's, it's a great tool to analyze your data and to improve on, on everything. Well, that's the end of uh, the video part two. And um, yes, we are happy to, to answer all the questions you might have. Thank you. Hey, great, thank you very much, uh, Kai and Michael for that fantastic presentation. Uh, and of course, thank you to Kim, who's clearly the, the real hero of this workshop. <laughs> it, it, it's great that uh, the, it, it shows the power of of the uh, the GART system plus Triumph three that you know someone who hasn't worked with it too much can can figure out the um, the workflow there and and basically anyone can use it. It's very very easy to use. Uh, so at at this point, I'd like to turn over to questions from the audience. So uh, please let us know if you have any questions for Kai and Michael at this point about. Triumph 3 or about the GART software or any of the, the capabilities of, of uh, any of these things. Do you plan to add RTPK to the GART software? Definitely. <laughs> Kai, Wait. elaborate on it, please. Yes, we will do so. I think uh, uh, until the end of the year, we will have a version, yes. We put very much effort into this tilted measurement, as you can see with all those checks and quality control. And uh, we are uh, just about to 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 make the uh, the last tuning. And we decided to first make the tilt version the way we expected from our quality point of view, and then next we we move to RTPK. But in general, we think it's a fantastic feature. If, for example, you're standing in the, let's say, in heavy environment, you you have still your RTK correction, but the receiver is floating around and you you don't get the fix, and I think then RTPK is is a very very important tool to to still uh, have the chance to get the precise coordinates calculated, and of course we cannot only uh, run it then but we also will use this coordinate that RTPK gives us to correct the coordinate of the point that has been surveyed. And this needs to be um, also quality controlled from our point of view. Great. Yeah, that'll be very exciting to have RTPK added in there. We get lots of questions and uh, lots of comments about RTPK. So it seems like people are very excited about it. And it's been a, a major, uh, major feature for surveyors in particular. Uh, what's the difference between GART and the Javad 4 engine processing a fixed position? Uh, there's no difference. Right, Kai, we take, doesn't matter if you uh, activate multi RTK or not, we take the, let's say, the precise coordinate that the Javad receiver gives us. Correct. Yes, and you can enable multi RTK inside guard or disable it, and you will get uh, the solution with the highest weight uh, of the four engines that will be put into the message we use in guard for the position. 
Okay, great. Uh, Jacek is asking, do, do you use JMT for measuring with, with Triumph 3? Uh, I, I think I can answer this question. Sure. I often use JMT for Triumph 3, and it's working very good. Um, you can, uh, for stakeout and collecting points and uh, RTPK, uh, you can use it very good, yes. On Android. Uh, at the moment, its Android version is perfect. Uh, the Apple version, iOS, you need uh, to wait. Uh, I think I, you need to wait some time because uh, on iOS, you only get version 3. On Apple, it's uh, on Android, it's version 4.5, I think, the actual version. And uh, yes, I think it's a very good software, yes. And if you have further questions about JMT, we did do a workshop related specifically to JMT working with Triumph 3. And uh, that was led by the lead developer, um, Yuri Noyanov. Uh, so if you go to our YouTube page, you should be able to find that video in our workshop playlist. And that should have uh, plenty of uh, more details about JMT working with Triumph 3. Any further questions or clarifications you need, feel free to, to post them here. Um, of course, if you think of questions afterwards or any, anything else comes to mind, you can always contact us at sales at jabod.com. Our team is ready and, and willing to, to help you with any issues that you might have and answer any of your questions. Uh, Kai and, and Michael, if they want to get in touch with Allsat, what's the best way to, to contact you guys? Well, we are, we are open over all channels, but um, um... I think the, the 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 easiest way I put our um, I enter our email address into the chat. It's uh, it's simply info at alzat. Uh, de, and um, this one will be um, um, then broadcasted uh, or uh, taken care of definitely by by our um, by our team. If you want uh, to, maybe, uh, yes, okay. <laughs> if maybe, you need support, one, okay. <laughs> maybe, no, no, no. Maybe one okay. more word for for our guard software. It's um, it's available in thirteen different languages, and we have also not only integrated all projections that are valid into Europe, but for example, also the US projection. So, in principle, guard will also work in the US. However, this is not our main focus. Our focus for guard is um, is Europe, um, but but we we are open definitely. We've uh, users also in Japan and um, uh, in China and uh, in Africa, so um, we are we are very open with guard. Okay, great. Uh, so I'll I'll close with just a, a reminder that we have. Uh, workshops every month. Uh, it's always the last Thursday of the month, so stay tuned to our newsletter uh, about upcoming topics and always contact us if you have suggestions or anything that you'd like to hear about in uh, uh, future workshops, what, what topics you'd like to hear. Uh, and just a, another thank you for uh, Kai and Michael's time and effort in putting together this workshop for you. I think this was a, a great um, really great information um, for anyone interested in Triumph 3 and GART and and surveying with, with this combination. Um, and also congratulations again on your 30 year anniversary this year. That's really exciting. So congratulations, you guys. Thanks. All right. And and thank you to the audience for joining us. So we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Goodbye.